in our schlong today is uh it's about that gentle parenting mm -hmm. um phenomenon bill maher actually did a little spiel about it we're going to talk about him his reaction and then some other angles of that uh, of what's happening to our kids right now, because it's not good. Hearing how parenting is so hard these days, yeah, because you're making it hard. <laughs> Gentle parenting, it's like a Taco Bell breakfast. The reason it feels wrong is because it is. <laughs> and it's ruining lives on both sides of the equation. Parents, it's ruining your lives because you've made, a, made yourselves a butler to a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. And the kids, because the results are in, and all this letting the kids run the show, path of least resistance child rearing, is harming them. The average high school kid today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the early 1950s. God. Wow. A recent survey of employers found that about one in five recent college graduates brought their parents with them to a job interview. Our kids are crippled with anxiety because they haven't been properly prepared for a world that doesn't revolve around them. <laughs> exactly. Almost 10% of college students claim to have PTSD from college, the cradle of safetyism, the oh home God. of safe spaces and trigger warnings and policing offensive words. You're not supposed to get PTSD in college. Supposed to get an STD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this whole gentle parenting thing is taken off too. Like, if you're on social media at all, you see it everywhere, and people are so in support of it. Like, yeah. oh, this is the right way to parent. You're supposed to do this and talk to your kid like this. And I'm like, oh my god. And maybe you know, I, there are times where I question myself because I'm such a Gen Xer <laughs> that I'm like what are you doing? Like, just, <laughs> it doesn't matter that you're bleeding. Get up. Right. It's like, <laughs> is there a bone sticking out? You're fine. Right, you're fine. My God, just put some dirt on it. That's, and we have, that's how we've raised our kids. And that's how we raise Gwen. And she's, you know, 14. And I just, you know, we try to make sure that they're all very independent because one day they have to go out into this nasty big world and they got a deal. Mm -hmm. You cannot coddle them. You just can't. And I think a lot of these parents are doing that. It's like the, the butler thing was a very interesting yeah. point that he made where you just, these people are waiting on their kids hand and foot. You got to make them be independent. You have to. Well, and we're doing a disservice, not just from the gentle parenting, but kids are struggling, as he said, just as much as psych patients from the 1900s or whatever, whenever that was. I mean, yeah. ridiculous how much worse their mental health is the more we focus on it. Mm -hmm. And that was what was so remarkable to me. There was this chart about depressive symptoms in U.S. 8th, 10th and 12th graders just over the past few decades. I mean, look at the shift. Look at how much it's gotten worse since 2015. Right. And like, it's just jumped exponentially. And so Abigail Schreier talked about therapy because now, of course, parents are either putting their kids on antidepressants, which is also mm -hmm. a whole other terrifying thing that I mean, because kids can get legit crazy from those. Right, right. Um, but there's also this notion of, you know, putting kids in therapy and and, and going to therapy, even as adults, to the point where it's just, it's routine. People do this thinking that it's good for them, but it's a racket in, in many ways. Not saying that all therapy is bad. I'm certainly not saying that. And therapy is super necessary for some people. But the people that are using it as, as a way, as, as a, as a, um, like they're holding it up as an example of how to be healthy mentally, that right. everybody should be in therapy. That is bullshit. And it's damaging. And Abigail Schreier was on with Joe Rogan to talk about that really, really interesting little segment from that uh, wow. interview. You know, I never really considered that until your book, until I heard the title of your book and I read the synopsis of it. I, I never really considered it. I never considered that thinking about your problems all the time and talking about your problems all the time li literally make the problems grow. That's yeah. right. I mean, it's the number one symptom of depression is what they call rumination, this pathological mm. obsessing over your pain. Yeah. 
That's why stuff like exercise, that's one of the reasons, aside from chemical reasons, one of the reasons that doing anything, you know that running errands is good for your mental health, getting out of your house and accomplishing anything yeah. is good for you. But sitting around talking and thinking about your problems, that's a bad habit. And the best cognitive behavioral therapists and others, you know, the, the dialectical behavioral therapists, the ones who do really well with depression, the first thing they do is try to break that, un, that, that bad pattern. But a lot of therapists just indulge it. Mm, that's I, the problem. I, I, I know this sounds so mean, but why is this not common sense? I don't know. I, don't I, I know. feel like I feel like a lot of this is just common sense. Like if you s feel sorry for yourself all the time, you're going to continue to feel sorry for yourself. Right. A lot. A lot of our problems are here. You know what I mean? And not and the ruminating actually She's here. Exactly right. About right. The ruminating and the and wallowing. Listen, and I'm not saying that like our generation and the, and you know, like boomers and Gen Xers, a lot of us probably had a problem with therapy and a lot of us had some issues and we probably need to deal with them. That's fine. And, and I'm not saying that you know, that's that therapy, like you said, is not a good thing. Therapy is a good thing, but this generation is like over therapyized. Totally. They're, they're just, they overdo it. It's overcomp like millennials and Gen Zers. It's just way overcompensated. I think it's well, just, we're, we're consuming it. it's they're consuming therapy like coffee, right? They're, they're thinking this is just a part of my daily mental health. Right. And thing, they, and it's and, not, and they want to give themselves a label for everything. I have this and I have this and I have yep. this, I have this disorder and that disorder and I have this kind of depression and that, and I have to be on this drug and that drug and that, and, and what it does is it labels themselves as less than or something mm -hmm. or, or, it, or yeah, it victimizes themselves or it makes them part of like this club where we can all get together and like have a self pity party. And it's like, I just, what the hell is that? I, right. it's like, I don't know. Well, and, and excuse, it, it excuses a lot of their behavior. Well, oh, right. Well, Oh, did I say something about that, that's because I'm this? I mean, it's, yes. it's all such this weird cycle of suck that we're in right now. It and is. it is a racket in some ways, because I, I do think that there are people, like she said, there are therapists who indulge this because they want the repeat business. They're going to tell their clients, you should absolutely have weekly sessions with me. Why wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it's and she made a great point when it's like, well, maybe you just need to go outside and go for a run once a day and you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> kids and kids need structure. Kids need, there are certain things that kids need, but I mean, I, some and teenagers, they have a lot, they have angst. They go through periods of time where they're not going to be, you know, these perfect little angels. Let right. them go through it. It's, we all go through it. You know, this is the thing. I think it's somebody said, Deanna, I love your comment. Touch grass. Yeah, exactly. exactly this is right. the thing. I mean, there's, there's just certain, I don't, let them be kids. Let them be mm -hmm. teenagers. You know, don't, we don't have to label everything. It can just exactly. be, you know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah.